Welcome to the last video of East Kent Schools Together's Creative Collaboration, Our Shared Isolation. I am Esther Miles, the Artist in Residence for East Kent Schools Together. In this video, I'm going to give you a glimpse of what I've been up to in the last couple of weeks and give you a rundown of all of the entry requirements for the competition. As you know, I've been completing all of the tasks along with you, so that includes me making a final piece. I've been making a bit of a video diary as I've gone along and I wanted to share that with you. This has been a really wonderful learning experience for me as for the last 15 years or so I've been working as an abstract artist and don't often get the opportunity to draw or paint real objects. I mostly work with colour and texture to convey a message. Most of my work has a slight three-dimensional element to it, so that light and shadows are cast as the viewer moves around the work. I often explore the idea of broken knitting as a symbol in my paintings. I'm certainly not the first artist to explore knitting in their work. I'm a bit obsessed with these numerous depictions of 19th century shepherds knitting on stilts, and this even older medieval ultra-motherly knitting Madonna. I mentioned in the last video that I'm interested in using those old sacred retablo paintings as a point of reference for my self-portrait. As well as the numerous self-portraits of Frida Kahlo who we looked at earlier, here's a rather surreal self-portrait as a wounded deer that really struck me. Of course, another very famous self-portrait artist who always inspires me is, of course, Rembrandt. I am very inspired by his etched self-portraits that are small and characterful. Here's the plan I made in the last video that brings together all of my influences and symbols. My main symbol of knitting required me to actually make an enormous scarf to completely envelop me. I like the idea of being completely wrapped up in it like a cocoon. I decided to cover my mouth for the pose in reference to the face mask we've all had to get used to. And what self-made lockdown cocoon is complete without knitting needles corona spikes? These are also supposed to give a nod to the vaccine that we all hope is our route out of lockdown. And also a link to Frida Kahlo's Wounded Deer and the Retablo paintings. I took a few photos to help me out. And from these I made a drawn study. As Mark Polsford suggested in his interview, doing lots of studies in a variety of media really help you get to grips with all the visual information you're working with. This quick painted study helped me arrive at my colour palette. Inspired by the dry point etchings of Rembrandt, I had a go at this technique. I've used a piece of perspex to scratch into rather than metal as he would have done. I rubbed an oil-based etching ink into my engraved lines. I was lucky enough to be able to borrow an etching press to make some prints. This is a very old technique that squidges the ink left on the plate into the paper. And here is the printed triptych. A triptych is three images that together make one piece. I used a colour wash with water-based pigment that resists the oil etching ink for this piece. However, while I was making the print, I became rather fond of the etching plate itself and realised that it may be possible to collage behind the perspex. Here I am playing around with the idea of colour blocking behind the plate. One of my favourite things about spending a lot of time on one piece is the ideas that arise during the process. I've been thinking a lot about how weird time passing has felt during our shared lockdowns. I was wondering how to best portray this idea of suspended time. I thought about the old practice of flower pressing and the idea of capturing, separating and preserving. I wanted to explore that idea in this piece. I created a collage using origami paper and gold leaf inspired by those religious paintings. I also used some hand painted paper more gold leaf, I'm dusting it away here. And some perspex blobs. To 
complete the look of a flower press, I use some wing nuts to secure the Perspex engraving above the collage. Here is the finished piece. Thanks for watching that. There's no specific worksheet this week. Instead, I want you to concentrate on working towards your final submission. The deadline is the 30th of April. Please don't worry if you feel like you're really behind. You've still got a couple of weeks to get everything together and that's plenty of time to make some really good work. The most important thing you need to submit, of course, is your finished piece. Your finished piece will be a self-portrait that includes at least one symbol of what has connected you to the outside world during your periods of isolation. What is most significant to the judge and I will not be your technical skill, but actually the message you are conveying through your work, i.e. what it says about you and your time in lockdown. You can work in any size or medium. You can use photography as a starting point for your piece, but the finished piece should not just be a photograph. It needs to be hung on a wall, so it shouldn't be a sculpture. As I'm still not able to physically visit you in your schools, you need to submit your work digitally to your art teacher. You will need to take a really good photo of your finished piece. The better the photograph, the easier Ben and I will find it to be able to look at the real details of your work. To take a good photo, hang or stick your picture to the wall. Take your picture in very good daylight, stand straight on and take a good snap. If you take your photo in the evening under lots of fake light, you will cast lots of unpleasant shadows on the piece and that will stop us being able to see the detail. Try and take a straight photo if you can. If not, some phones allow you to edit the photo straight. If your piece is small enough, you could also scan it. If you have any problems with this, please do let me know well in advance of the deadline. I'm sure we can sort it out together. In support of your final piece, we would love to see an ideas board. This is a collection of all of the things we've been working towards together. This could include your postcard, your artist studies, drawings of your symbolic object, sketches of yourself, photographs, explorations with different material and any other notes. If understandably you don't want to cut up your sketchbook, you could always scan or photograph the pages in and make a digital board. Either way, you need to submit it digitally to your teacher by the deadline. The final piece of supporting evidence we would like to see is a short video presentation of up to two minutes. There have been some really good videos on these, so do take a look. This video is just to help us get to know you, so please don't worry about making it super professional. In it, you can be as creative as you like, but we do need to know the following. Your name and school. So I'm Esther from East Kent Schools Together, who has inspired you. I was inspired by Rembrandt, Frida Kahlo and those Retablo paintings. What symbol or symbols have you used and what does it tell us about our shared isolation? Knitting is my main symbol. It connects me to others because I've made a lot of knitted gifts for friends and family over our lockdowns. I have also used the needles as a reference to the corona spikes and to the vaccine. I've also used brushes as a reminder of this project and our shared creativity during this project. I use the idea of the flower press to remind me of this strange suspended time in lockdown. What medium have you used and why? I've worked in mixed media. I like how all of the different textures work together and the layering aspect supports the idea of the flower press. And a name for your piece. I have called my piece self-portrait as Corona in a flower press. Again, you will need to submit this video to your teacher in MP4 format. You can take the video on your phone. So to recap, by the 30th of April, you will need to submit to your teacher the following. One finished piece, an ideas board, a very short video. The overall winner will win a fabulous photo shoot with professional photographer Ben Anker, who is also the guest judge for our competition. He will take a piece inspired by your final piece. You will also win a voucher from Cowling and Wilcox who are kindly supporting this project.
The runners-up from each of the participating schools will also receive a voucher from Cowling and Wilcox. Right now, everything looks good with restrictions easing on time. So if everything goes to plan, we will have a physical exhibition in the summer. It will be such a wonderful opportunity to get everybody to see your work. Either way, we will definitely get your work seen by a lot of people. I would like to say a massive thank you to all of your schools and especially to your art teachers who have been so positive during the project. A huge thank you to Sarah Moyer who has coordinated this project and has been constantly on hand to help me get organised. Lastly and most importantly, a gigantic thank you to you guys that are taking part in the project. I've been so overwhelmed by how engaged and positive you've been and also by the beautiful work that you have submitted throughout the project. I hope that you also feel that this has made our shared isolation a little bit brighter. Your work will be such an important record of these strange times that we are living in and that really is what being an artist is all about, so thank you. For now, I'm going to bid you a very fond farewell and wait with bated breath to see your final submissions. Bye!